Before the video starts, I want to thank all of you. My views are through the roof, but my subscriptions are falling short. Please subscribe. The advantage of subscribing is you not only get the latest videos, but you get it in a convenient location on my previous videos. I get a lot of messages, people asking me questions, and I love it. But most of the questions they ask, it's covered in previous videos. So if you subscribe, it's a win-win for all of us. And here's back to the video. So as I promised, I'm going to take this bench grinder and I'm going to show you how to reverse the direction. The reason you want to be able to reverse the direction, let's say you use a belt sander vertical and you make your passes and then you're ready to go to the next wheel. If you're going vertically, you want to be able to go vertically. Your repetition's all the same. You don't want to get mixed up and touch a knife to a wheel that's going the wrong direction. It can be really bad. Vertical on the belt sander or whatever tool you're sharpening with, and you want your wheel vertical. <clears throat> I use my belt sander in a horizontal position. I sharpen this way. And so I want to go on my next wheel this way. Repetition of motion. That's how you keep from messing up. So you note this arrow uh, and which way it spins. So the rotation with the switches facing forward, the rotation matches this arrow. Now we're going to reverse this. Let me show you how. After unplugging your tool, you're going to undo these four screws that hold the base on. I've done this on several of these. This particular model has this box. Got to get it out of the way. You can leave in place in this model. Sometimes you have to undo these and there'll be another mount for them over here. You might find you switch it. But then if you take a look here, there's a screw right here that screws the base to the motor on both sides. There's also vent holes. Be careful not to let the screws get down the vent holes. Sometimes these are screws, sometimes they're bolts. Once you get that done, what you're going to do is you just lift the base up off it and rotate it around. Put it back down. Now I've had some where the wiring is short. You have to go one way or the other. Uh, one time a ground wire had to be lengthened. But for the most part, you just rotate it like that. Take the screws, be careful not to drop them. Those vent holes are still open. Now this base, because this takes up space here, the base has to rotate to fit back on.
Gonna turn it on. And there you go. Now what's happening, okay. You notice this arrow that's pointed on. It shows the motor and the wheels always run the same directions no matter which way it's turned. But I've now got it turning away from me with the controls in the front. And it's as simple as that. I'm now able to safely run my knife across the top of the tool with the rotation going the right direction. Always mark your tools with the direction. This is just done with a Sharpie. Uh, white sticker was on the other side. That was better. You don't want to walk up to a tool. Once it's spinning, you can't tell which way it's spinning. And that's for safety reasons. I have touched a sharp knife to this wheel, a wheel like this, when it was running the wrong direction, it, I just slipped up, totally slipped up and put the knife down wrong. It cut down about three quarters of an inch, a chunk, and then threw the knife to the table. Luckily that it's, uh, alone was enough to stop the momentum of, the, of it. Uh, and when it threw it down to the table, it didn't damage the knife. So mark it, it's your best chance to never screw up and go the wrong way. Make sure to subscribe. Um, I'm sharing a lot of my uh, trade secrets with you guys. I enjoy it. Uh, just return the favor and hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.